One of the most important factors in a vehicle title is having a vehicle identification number. And a vehicle identification number is a unique identifier for every vehicle. And since 1981, these VIN numbers, as they're called, were standardized into having 17 digits and having certain criteria for each character. And each position in the VIN number means a certain thing. And from the VIN number, you can determine the year of the vehicle, the make and model, where it was manufactured, uh, and other validation features for a VIN number. And today we're gonna go through and decode the VIN number positions to determine which items go in which location. So in the first digit you're gonna find on every vehicle, this is gonna determine where the vehicle was built. So there's a certain standardized character number letter for that first digit, which determines the country or continent of manufacture. For example, in the case of the United States, it'll be designated as the number one, the number four, or the number five. Canada will be determined by the number two and Mexico will be determined by the number three. Now, keep in mind that this doesn't necessarily mean that that's where the manufacturer's headquarters. For example, you may have a Ford vehicle that's manufactured in Mexico, and you may have a vehicle manufactured by an Asian manufacturing company like Kia, also manufactured in Mexico. So that just determines where the vehicle was manufactured or more, um, more correctly, the final assembly point for that vehicle. The second two digits, character two and three, determine the manufacturer company. For example, Ford or General Motors. And you'll see from this list a very good determination of what the manufacturers are. So, for example, Ford is designated as F, like Foxtrot. General Motors is uh, designated as G, like in Golf. So you may have a vehicle that is 1G, which is United States General Motors. And then you can even determine the division of General Motors by the third digit. One would be Chevrolet, two would be Pontiac, three would be Oldsmobile, uh, and down the line. So 1G1 would be Chevrolet, 1G2 would be Pontiac. And there's a decoder list of all those, and we'll give you a link to that. Uh, in the notes. Simultaneously, the second digit of F would be Ford. So uh, Ford trucks might be FC or FD. So one FD would be uh, an example of a Ford first three digits. Once you get past the first three digits, now you're going to get into the next five or what's called the vehicle portrait. That's going to determine the model of the vehicle. The, sometimes it'll have the engine information in there. Sometimes it'll even have the trim level. For example, if you have a Toyota Camry and it's an LE versus an XLE, or um, you have a Ford truck uh, that is a Lariat model versus a base model, the next five digits will have that information encoded in those five digits. And in many cases, the actual model code itself for example, H41 might be a certain model and that will be embedded in those next five digits. So they're unique to a manufacturer and it will have a very specific identity, what's called a vehicle portrait for that manufacturer within that code. So just because it's a Ford truck, the first three digits might tell you that. The next five digits will tell you which type of Ford truck. Is it an F450? Is it a diesel? Uh, is it a, a V8 or is it a V6 EcoBoost? The ninth digit is very interesting. That's what's called the check digit or security code. And for a better explanation of how that check digit works, we're going to take a look at the National Highway Transportation Safety Administration's website where they talk about check digits. And here's how it works. It's a little bit complicated, but let's walk through it. Each position in the standardized VIN number is given a number, 1 through 17. And you can see that across the top row. 
the second row is the example VIN number used for this calculation. And you can see the VIN number here is listed at the top and it's plugged into this second row. And you can use this check digit calculator tool at the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration to verify your check digit. The next thing you're going to do is you're going to convert each one of these characters into a number. So the number five converts to the number five. The letter Y converts to the number eight. And the way that's done is you just keep counting through the alphabet, one through zero, then one through zero, and it just keeps going uh, one through zero. And you'll find that each letter has a number associated with it. E is five, one, two, three, four, five, A, B, C, D, E, right? So it's the number five. And if you went through the alphabet and just kept going one through zero, you'll find that each letter will correspond to a number. So now you plug those numbers into this next row. Now here's where it gets complicated. The next row is what's called a multiplier row. And you use this series of numbers as a multiplier. So the first digit is 8, 7, and then 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, and then 10. Number 9 is 0. Tenth digit is 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2. So all that means is you're going to take the converted to number, multiply it times the multiplier, and it's going to give you a result. That's getting complicated, but bear with me. You'll see how this works out. Once you've converted the letter to a number, multiply it times the multiplier, which is these are fixed numbers. These don't change. Every vehicle is going to be the same, right? So every vehicle, the number 11th digit, you're going to multiply times 8. So in this case, the 11th digit was F, like in Foxtrot. That converts to a 6. You're always going to multiply digit 11 times 8. That gives you 48. Now you have this fourth row calculated. You're going to add all these numbers together. 40 plus 56 plus 6 plus 15 plus 20, all the way down. In this case, it adds up to 307. Right. So now, again, this is very complicated, but there's a reason why this is done. You now take 307 and you divide it by 11. It's always the number 11 you divide by. What happens is it'll give you a remainder. And you remember from your old school, elementary school math, anytime you divide by something, there's an even number of a divisor and then there's a remainder. In this case, the remainder is 10. 10 or the number zero will be that check digit. And if it is correct, it'll match up with what's in the VIN number. The reason this is done is to make sure people don't make up fake VIN numbers. This is a way that the VIN numbers are all verified to make sure there's no fake VIN numbers. That being said, let's move on to the next digit. This is very complicated. The next digit is the model year. Okay, so the 10th character is the year of the vehicle. And you can see from this chart that's popping up on the screen is what all the model years associated with. There's different model years associated with each letter and number. And you'll see that some letters and numbers are used twice throughout the, um, the history of the vehicles from 1981, 1980 actually going up until uh, 2040. So you'll have to use the rest of the VIN number to make sure you have a 2017 or 2007 or 2027. Once you get past the 10th character, that's an important one, by the way. 10th character tells you the model year of the vehicle. Now you have the true serial number. The 11th character tells you what plant it was manufactured in. So if it was in Toledo, Ohio, uh, was it in... Um, South Carolina, it'll tell you the plant at that manufacturer. And then the last six digits, really, that's the only part that's a true serial number. That's the true serial number of the vehicle with the last six digits. Now, as you see, six digits only gives you one million possibilities. So for a manufacturer, they would have to differentiate everything else by the make and model to get to that last six digits, which is the true serial number. Every vehicle has within its VIN number, vehicle identification number, all of this information. The country where it was built, 
the manufacturer, the make and model and engine, the check digit to make sure the serial number is valid. Uh, the model year of the vehicle is embedded into that VIN number. So you can tell the year of a vehicle by the VIN number, uh, what plant was manufactured, and then the serial number of that particular model. Now here's a question. What happens if a vehicle is older than 1980? Well, the federal government did not require that VIN numbers have 17 digits until 1980 or 1981 model year, depending upon um, the manufacturer. Prior to that, there was really no rhyme or reason. And the reason that the U.S. government required 17 digits is to make sure that no two manufacturers had the same VIN number for two different vehicles. Fortunately, it was pretty rare. Most manufacturers had some type of numbering system for vehicles. And, you know, for those into classic cars, a lot of times you can tell if a number's matching GTO Judge is a real GTO by looking at the serial number, even if it's prior to 1981. However, that wasn't required by the U.S. government. That was a manufacturer policy only. And in order to prevent that policy from creating clone vehicles or uh, duplicate VIN numbers, the government made manufacturers conform to this 17-digit format of a VIN number and having each digit mean a certain thing. But if you have an older vehicle, 1960s, 1970s, even back into the 50s, you can normally determine what type of vehicle it is by the serial number. Now, it may be different on manufacturers. For example, the engine code might be digit three and four on a Ford. It might be digit eight or nine on a General Motors vehicle. And there's classic car enthusiast websites that will tell you how to decode VIN numbers and find out the true model to find out if it's a GTO judge or just a tribute vehicle on those older type of VIN numbers. But this is a very good way to determine on newer vehicles, 1981 and newer, whether or not your VIN number, first of all, is accurate. You can verify that check digit to make sure it's authorized. And you don't have to do all that math. If you want to verify the check digit, you can just go to the NHTSA website, put in a VIN number, and it'll tell you if the VIN number is correct. This green bar at the bottom will tell you if the check digit is correct or if it's an improper forgery VIN number. And then you can also look at manufacturer specific websites to see that five digit profile or portrait of a vehicle is correct for that make and model. We've had cases where somebody has taken, for example, a Toyota Camry uh, that might have been a, an LE model, a base model, and stuck on badges for an XLE and maybe some trim work and tried to pass it along as a higher model. You can de decode it from that portrait in the first section of the VIN number. Uh, and of course, the true serial number, that last six, will be something you can use for things like Carfax or um, the, the other VIN verification websites. Uh, VIN Audit is another good one. So there's an overview of the vehicle identification number format, what goes into each digit, and what makes it a true vehicle identification number and not just a made up random series of letters and numbers. The other thing you'll notice is the letter I and the letter O is not used in the number or the letter section of the VINs and also the letter Q. And that's to con prevent confusion. So if somebody has a letter O or the number zero or the letter I or the number one, those letters are not used in the standardized format, the letter I, the letter O, or the letter Q. So if you see a digit that is a round circle, it is a zero. If you see a digit that looks like a stick, that's a number one, it's not an I, it's not a lowercase l. So those are rules that you can go by to make sure that you're using the correct letters. We also recommend if you're using VIN numbers and you're communicating those to do it in writing. Don't read it over the phone. Don't do it verbally because a B or P or a D can sound the same over the phone where in writing it's going to be 100% accurate. And that's an overview of VIN numbers. Of course, you can download forms or some of these resources from our website at cartitles.com and we'd be glad to help.